Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. Hope you're having a great day in Jesus. You ever wondered, you know, as you're reading through Revelation 17 and 18, who or what is Babylon the Great? Sitting here reading Revelation 18 and 2, and it says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. It has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every every unclean and hateful bird and you know it just goes on to describe and then it says you know come out of her my people and all of this so what or who what is Babylon the great now one of the things that finest Dake in the Dake study Bible I thought made a salient point on and I and it maybe it was made throughout history he's the first one in modern evangelicalism that I personally saw but I'm sure there's probably others that differentiated between Babylon and chapter 17 in Babylon in chapter 18 of the book of Revelation. And so he would say that chapter 17, and it appears obvious that this is true, is in fact ecclesiastical Babylon or religious Babylon. And chapter 18 would be economic Babylon. So what is Babylon? I mean, this goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 11. You have, by implication, Nimrod and the rebellion of mankind bringing the world together. I find it fascinating. I was looking online recently at one of the European Parliament buildings and it's done like the Tower of Babel. It's a famous picture of the Tower of Babel. And so that's where Babylon came from. And Babylon is always, you know, about confusion because that's where tongues were confused, false religion. They're going to make a tower with the heavens at the top or to the top of heaven. And, uh, you know, and then you go into the Hislop stuff, and a lot of people say that's been debunked. I've tried to objectively read all that. I'm not so sure Hislop has been conclusively debunked, really. Um, you know, about Nimrod and Ashtaroth and Tammuz and how that, that uh, father, chi father, mother, child cult went around the world and is, you know, really goes back to the Tower of Babel. So Babylon, no, getting back to the subject at hand, who, who is Babylon? And, you know, in chapter 17, many times that Babylon has been associated with Rome or the Roman Catholic Church per se. Now, a lot of people, you know, it talks about the seven hills, seven mountains, you know, you have Vaticanus, you have the different hills of Rome, and it seems to be po very possibly that religious Babylon is referring to the Roman Catholic Church. Now, some people say, well, is it an Orthodox Church or is it something else? And maybe that's just kind of like a pop Protestant view of things, but I've known of some Catholics that even said that <laughs> chapter 17 appears to be talking about the Catholic Church. Now, other people would say it's just talking about false religion in the end time, just as there's a globalism and a new world order and these type things coming to pass, Revelation 13, one world monetary system, economic system, that there's going to be a one world religion with the false prophet. Again, that's Revelation 13, amongst other places in the book of Revelation. When you get to chapter 18, economic Babylon, would that still, if chapter 17 is talking about Rome, which to me is an open-ended question, there's some people, believe it or not, that would actually say it's talking about Jerusalem. You know, back in Revelation 11, it talks about that spiritually Jerusalem is known as Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And so they would say that Babylon is actually Jerusalem. Um, others would say, getting back to economic Babylon, that the uh, First and Second Gulf Wars are a very significant, and that Babylon, in an economic sense, will be rebuilt in modern day Iraq and that this would occur after many people would say this you know maybe Chuck Missler and 
these type. Chick Milford does a great job on the Magog invasion that after Russia, Turkey, and Iran, and Libya all converge and attack Israel as seen, it seems, in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, that once they're destroyed, then Iraq would be the economic superpower in the Middle East, of course, along with Israel. And during that attack, it appears that Saudi Arabia and the isles that are far off uh, seem to be neutralized somewhat as you read through Ezekiel 38 and 39. And so, again, that would leave Israel in Iraq. And so it would be talking about physical Babylon being rebuilt in Iraq. And there's some merit to that view. Others throughout time have just said, well, it's Rome, just as, as Rome is in fact Revelation 17, religious Babylon, that it's also economic Babylon in Revelation 18. Uh, one of the most unique times of my life is when I was a young man just looking at an atlas and I was looking at like a map of New York City and there's a part of New York City off Long Island called Babylon. I was like, huh. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. So a lot of people have identified it with New York City or with um, the United States in general. Some people would say the identity of Babylon based on Zechariah, you have two unclean birds uh, seemingly carrying Babylon, but it does seem in that instance, and to be in the plain of Shinar, that Babylon has shifted in definition over the years. And that's the reason they would say the United States is actually Babylon. Some of the more modern Nauvoo commentators would say that San Francisco is. Um, one of the famous books was that Tom Wolfe wrote Hollywood Babylon. Because it's obvious that this wickedness is going all around the world from this place, Babylon, which is confusion. And because of confusion and because it overspread the earth, that it was something that was rather imperialistic and maybe even culturally imperialistic to spreading filth around the world. Um, some have said it's Hong Kong. Some have said Beijing recently because of the rising power in uh, Asia. Uh, another fascinating view, I think, is it Jonathan Kahn who teaches this, that he would say Babylon is actually Mecca or Medina and that this would be because of the spirit of Antichrist that you know, Islam would not believe Jesus Christ is Almighty God, that uh, Islam would play some role in what Babylon was. Another, you know, you, you have another segment of like the internet and YouTube and all this about the city. And that's London, and that's what they mean by the city. And that London is the obvious financial superpower, and the sun never sets on the British Empire. And, you know, it's got Australia, it's got Canada, it's got South Africa, it's got various. Um, colonial subjects around the world there's a there's a name for that it's not imperialism that's what's coming to mind but anyhow you know they've got these various things around the world they used to have Hong Kong and uh, so is it London well it's obvious it's on great waters it's obvious that it is a financial superpower and uh, you know my, my biggest hope is is that it's not the United States of America and the scripture does say in 2nd Chronicles 7 14 if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray seek my face turn from their wicked ways then uh, I'll hear from heaven I'll uh, you know, heal their land, I'll forgive their sins, heal their land. And so, you know, we do four things, God does three things, seven, perfect number of God, all this. But um, whoever Babylon is, um, I think we should just work while it's day. And it does seem obvious that Paul at that, I mean, excuse me, John at that time seemed to say, you know, look, it's it's rather obvious who this is um, because of the seven hills analogy. 
Verse 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Reigneth over the kings of the earth. And in John's day, that would have been Rome. It, it just seems uh, very much so. But then again, some people would say that religious Babylon in 17 and Revelation 18, economic Babylon would be two totally different places. And I think there's a new movie out, Steven Anderson, those guys framing the word about Babylon. I've watched some of that movie. I went to watch the whole thing. I just didn't have time. I'm very pressed for time. <laughs> and I just don't have time to like watch movies and things. And uh, even documentaries. I wish I did. But uh, that uh, they would make the case that the USA is Babylon. But uh, let's just have revival till Jesus comes. And at least these are some possibilities you can think of and pray about. Maybe do your own study and uh, just maybe trying to give you a head start in study sometimes. Uh, a lot of people get very upset because I don't make in some things I don't make definitive conclusions like who are the sons of God in a video. People are like, well, who do you think they are? And uh, well, I've got my own personal opinions, but I'm still in discovery stage on that. But on the main things, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the identity of Jesus Christ, and living a holy life of purity, love, and righteousness, separation from the world, salvic matters, yeah, let's just stick there and be totally, absolutely sure about that. So uh, some of these other things, like Let's just pray about and see what God shows and shares. So talk with you later. Who is babbling? Talk with you later. In Jesus' name, amen.